I'm out here at Airplane Circle today with my mini tricopter and my mini T-copter. Both of these are from simplecopter.com. This one has been my tried and true line of sight flyer. This thing has been awesome. And I just recently picked up this T-copter to see how it fared line of sight also. Now this comes with a uh, little top plate you can put on here and set up your FPV equipment, but I haven't done that yet because I wanted to fly at line of sight. Anyway, this one has extremely good control and this one is about the exact same as this one. It's, it's essentially using all the same parts, um, 12 amp ESCs, Sunny Sky 2206 motors, and uh, rear servo. When it comes to tricopters, a lot of people are scared of them because of this rear servo. Now the important thing about a rear servo is that it's tight to the arm because when it has to push against this, when it has to push this rear platform back and forth, it has to have, it has to be solid down underneath here. Now this side here, I got some decent foam tape. It's pretty thin and uh, very sticky. And when I first built this one, I had too thick a foam tape in here. And when it would try to push the platform up like this, it, the uh, servo itself would start leaning. And so this thing could hardly turn this way. But when I tried to pull it this way, it would just crank it and the thing would spin like a top. So I essentially just had, I just, just pretty much got rid of the foam tape and just mounted it straight to the uh, arm. And uh, that should be fine, I think. I got. I got probably I'll try to find some double-sided sticky scotch tape or something to put in there eventually but but anyway yeah these servos aren't really that scary basically you mount it on here you put the um, run your little wire through here to get that connects into the platform and then uh, make sure your servo is centered and you can do that just by turning on your tricopter and then turning it off and it'll serve it'll center it and then just level this back platform it used to be you needed to lean this platform one way or the other i can't remember but anymore you just make it centered and the thing takes care of itself on this t-copter here i ended up drilling this hole in the top to try to run all my cables up through it instead of out around the side of the platform just to make it look a little nicer well the bad thing is is that these cables kind of cover up these buttons on the kk2 board and it's kind of a pain to to uh, program the buttons unless you get some kind of stick. I would have been better off putting a hole up here and letting them come down from the top. But, you know, gee, whatever. And these are the batteries I've been using. I've been using a 1000 milliamp, 13, 13, and 1500 milliamp hour batteries. And these are all 3S and they, they seem to do pretty well. Now these are the uh, 1.3 nanotechs and they're rated 25 to 50 C. And these are getting a little puffy, but that's just because <laughs> I'm getting a little better at my line of sight flying now, and so I'm pushing my batteries harder. These two are both new, and so is this one, so this one is well used and well appreciated for what it is. Anyway, let's get this thing to flying. It has extremely good hover and uh, flies very well. I guess I'm a little short flying here. Close flying so we can see how it does. And the nice thing about this is the orientation with the T-copter versus the Y-copter, uh, it's a lot easier to keep track of which side is the front on a T-copter simply because it's straight. So anyway, let's get this thing going. Here we go. And I need to work out a little bit of PID settings. And uh, I set the sensitivities on this up pretty high. The stick scaling is up at 100, and my X, actually the stick scans are at, a, at 100 and, 100 and, 105, I think. And I got my uh, Expo set up to uh, just at 100 on my Tyrannus. So yeah, the, the, this thing does flips like a madman. Uh, like I said, I just got the stick scaling set up pretty high recently. So this thing flips a lot faster than what I'm used to. But I want to fly like Hall Studio, so you know, that's what you get. No All right, let's do some flips here. There's a roll. There's a roll. Back flip. Woo! Front flip. 
when you got the stick scaling set up pretty high, they're, they're not too hard to do. It's just a matter of pulling off the stick when you're supposed to. We'll do a double flip. We'll do a double, double roll. It kind of has a little pause when it rolls, but I think that's something more to do with the programming in the KK2 than the flight controller itself. I mean, than the, uh, me as the pilot. But this thing has no problem getting up and going. We'll do a big long flip. I also like this thing where it flips over upside down and then it holds like this and then you flip it around at the very end. But yeah, being a T, this thing has a, you have a very good chance of always keeping the orientation on it without getting too, you know, messed up. The Y copper is a little bit more difficult because sometimes it's easy to tell which is the rear and other times it's harder but I put LEDs on there to help me with uh, this one and my Y copter mostly so I can tell you know when it's facing away from me we'll go ahead and get some fly time in on the mini tricopter see how it handles everything as well It has red LEDs on the rear arms. And those are mostly just, like I said before, to help with orientation. In this video, I was flying the T-Copter with the Nanotech and the uh, Mini Tricopter with the um, Rhino 1350. Anyway, both of these Tricopters are amazing. This one, to me, has a slight advantage in that it's a little bit easier to keep the orientation. This one has the advantage that I think it looks a lot cooler being the Y shape rather, th rather than the T shape. Anyway, if you have any questions about these Tricopters, uh, let me know in the comments and I'll try to help you out. Uh, if you want to pick one up for yourself, you can visit simplecopter.com. And uh, as always, thanks for watching.